Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Genesis Institute's Evening of Stories. It is so great to have everybody. It's, we didn't get to do this last year, right? It's so good to see all the smiling faces, although albeit sometimes in a mask, and we're just so honored and glad that you're here to be with us tonight in fellowship and in giving. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pat Simmons. I'm going to be your MC and your auctioneer this evening. Thank you so much for having me tonight. I know that some of you are new to Genesis Institute and their mission, and that some of you have been supporters who attend this event year after year after year. Whether you're new or well-seasoned, I know there is something inspirational in tonight's program for everyone. So, uh, before, uh, before we get too far into the program, I would like to acknowledge we have some dignitaries and elected officials in the audience tonight. Um, ladies and gentlemen, di uh, District Director and Deputy Chief of Staff to Kathy McMorris Rogers' office, Patrick Bell, is with us tonight. The Mayor of Spokane Valley, Ben Wick, is with us tonight. <laughs> Deputy Mayor of Spokane Valley, Brandy Peets, is here tonight. Thank you, Brandy. <laughs> City Council Member of Spokane Valley, Tim Hattenberg, is here tonight. <laughs> and Central Valley School District Board Member, Debbie Long. Thank you for being here tonight, Debbie. Thank you. Great, we have a wonderful evening in store for you. You're gonna hear from Will Wilhelm, the executive director of Genesis Institute about the vision of this organization as they move into the future, along with two powerful testimonials of how God worked through Genesis Institute team to help people in need, which is why we're here tonight to help, right? We have an exciting live auction and paddle raise planned for this evening, which will help provide kingdom resources for Genesis Institute needs in order to make their vision of the future a reality. Last but surely not least, we're excited to hear from Clint Gresham. I've had the pleasure of meeting Clint this afternoon, reading his book Becoming, and I cannot wait to hear Clint bring the thunder like the Super Bowl champ and spiritual leader that he is. Yeah. Good. We're we're big on celebrating, we're big on honoring God tonight, and we are big on clapping and making some noise, which is a good, good thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my honor to invite Nate Mead, Mead, excuse me, Nate Mead to the stage to lead us in prayer. Nate? Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate Mead. I am the Vice President of the Genesis, uh, Genesis Institute Board of Directors. And on behalf of the Board of Directors, staff, the volunteers, and other ministry partners of Genesis Institute, I want to welcome you, welcome uh, those of you who are online with us as well uh, this evening uh, to our annual Evening of Sto Stories fundraiser and auction. Before we get started with tonight's program, uh, we would like to open our time in prayer expressing our gratitude to God and dedicating this evening to him. So would you please join me as we pray? God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for the transformation we have seen and experienced through the power of your Holy Spirit. It is only because of who you are that we are here. We are believing that you have great plans for Genesis, far beyond what we could ever imagine. Would you use tonight for the building of your kingdom? Thank you for the many lives that have been blessed, the stories that will be shared. And would you speak to each one of us for the plans that you have in each of our lives? And we thank you for who you are. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, we recognize that many of you who are attending tonight or watching at home online and or might be new to the Genesis Institute, uh, you are joining us tonight to learn more about who we are and what we do. 
Therefore, we have created a short ministry overview video to provide you with the introduction to Genesis Institute. And please, would you watch and direct yourself to the screens? God says in his word that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And yet, we're broken, we're hurting, and we hurt others. This wonderful creation, made in the image of God, is marred by sin and pain and trauma. How do we find healing? How do we repair what has been damaged? In 1994, God called Dave and Kathy Hutchins with a few close friends to start the Genesis Institute. Their desire was founded on God's promise to reconcile broken relationships and to see people's hearts set free. The Genesis Institute has been accomplishing this for decades now through an integration of biblical truth and evidence-based therapy. Not everyone needs the same level of support, so Genesis created two branches of its ministry, mental health counseling for long-term therapy and soul care training and mentoring programs that examine needs like spiritual development, biblical counseling concepts, parenting, and marriage relationships. These two arms help people move toward true healing, forgiveness, and real connection so they can experience who they were created to be. The Word of God says, they will know you are Christians by your love for one another. We're called to love, and we desire to love, but sometimes our relationships become more than we can handle alone. Genesis Institute's heart is to bear your burdens with you. No one goes into marriage looking for it to fall apart. No one has children hoping those relationships fail. No one wants shattered friendships. We are created to be in relationship, but in this broken existence, relationships can be hard. With more than 25 years of experience and over 2,500 people served in the last three years alone, the Genesis Institute is dedicated to helping individuals, marriages, and families grow stronger and healthier. We're reaching back to our roots, to our foundations, to collaborate with churches, businesses, and other civic organizations to help meet the needs of people in our community. The Genesis Institute has partnered with many businesses and ministries over the years. We're striving now to deepen those roots and reach further out to other organizations who share our heart to restore the brokenhearted and set the captives free. We're excited to see God multiply our efforts and expand our impact through strategic partnerships and through the body of Christ coming together to be his hands and feet. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Partner with us and let's be the light of Christ for those in need in our community. Together, we can reconcile broken relationships and see people's hearts set free. Well, good evening, and welcome to Genesis Institute's Evening of Stories. Uh, my name is Will Wilhelm, and I'm the executive director here at Genesis Institute. Let me just say how excited we are to see tonight's event come to fruition. Uh, we have not been able to gather to celebrate what the Lord has done in over two years because of COVID. Uh, but that's what tonight is designed to be, a time of celebration, a time of recognition of what the Lord has done in and through the staff and volunteers at Genesis Institute as we endeavor to serve more people in need in our community. You know, collectively, God is calling us to serve more people in need in our, in our society. We have more people coming to Genesis Institute or trying to uh, reach support services through our organization than ever before. You know, from the formation of Genesis Institute in 1994 to today, it's always been about helping couples and individuals and families in their time of need, walking alongside individuals to help them in their journey, either through our counseling services or through our spiritual development classes under soul care. And as we continue to move forward from this day into the future, we as an organization are staying focused on what we were originally created to be and to accomplish in 1994, which again is to care for more individuals in our community. But more on this in just a minute. Before we get started, 
I'd like to say some special thank yous to uh, some groups of individuals that have not only helped us put tonight on, but have been walking alongside our ministry for a long time, and especially in the last two years as we've tried to navigate the realities of COVID. Uh, the first group I would like to acknowledge is our board of directors. Uh, I am blessed with a very compassionate, skilled, and passionate board of directors who not only understand what Genesis Institute is all about, but their passion to see more people be served by our community. So if they're, my board of directors are here tonight, would you please stand and allow me to honor, your, honor and thank you for your service to our board? Okay. And we have two board members that could not participate with us tonight, but they're watching from home. So Elaine and Larry, thank you for your service. Uh, the next group of individuals is the staff and volunteers. You know, I heard a pastor once say, if you want impactful, good ministry, you need good people. And then you need to empower them to serve and then get out of their way. Well, I have endeavored to try to get out of our staff's way and our volunteers' way as much as possible. They are the most passionate and compassionate individuals that I have met in a long time. So if the staff that are here, counseling staff, administrative staff, would you please rise and let us honor and recognize you? They're probably working in the back table. There's Kelly, good, thank you. <laughs> Bethany. Now, if you have ever volunteered to help Genesis Institute, either with a class, Courageous Parenting, Core Concepts, helped in the administrative office, helped with Linda in the development team, uh, or if you've ever been on our board of directors in the past, any volunteer experience with Genesis Institute, would you please rise? There's Meg, okay, and Terry. Again, ladies and gentlemen, these are the individuals that God has used to touch the lives of individuals in our community. God works through these individuals to help people in their journey of, towards healing. Uh, the next group of individuals that I want to uh, acknowledge are the sponsors that actually helped us not only put on this event tonight, but have partnered and kept this ministry moving forward over the last two years. Uh, to our premier level sponsor, Ms. Ann Buys Hayden, Thank you so much for your support, not only in this time of COVID, but your dedication to seeing Genesis Institute reach more people in our community. Uh, to our, our executive level sponsors, we have three of them. That's Hauk Chiropractic Clinics, Ziggy's Home Improvement, and Mike and Carol Larson. A special thank you to you guys as well for being so supportive of our ministry and investing in our ability to serve people in our local community. Yes, thank you. To the rest of our sponsors and ministry partners that have walked alongside us in the last couple of years, uh, I would point them out in your program tonight. They're all listed. Uh, I would encourage you to look over that list and say a special prayer of gratitude to the Lord for those organizations and individuals for their willingness to walk alongside us in this time of need. So thank you to all of our sponsors. Okay, next. I'm going to endeavor to calm my nerves down a little bit here in my excitement and give you a little bit of a ministry update. I want to share with you what we've been working on over the last two years, talk a little bit about what we're doing today, and then I hope to paint a clear picture of where we want to go into the future, what we want to accomplish in the future. Uh, first, what's been going on over the last two years is I joined Genesis Institute as the new executive director in February of 2020, just a couple of weeks, yeah, just a couple of weeks before the pandemic hit. So uh, this is how you know the Lord has a sense of humor. It's like, Will, you want to change jobs? Okay, you're going to change right before a global pandemic. So, um, but you know, when I was going through the interview process and talking with the board, I became very energized by the vision the board had for where they wanted to see Genesis Institute move to into the future. It was something that I had my own personal experience with that I became really passionate about serving and helping more people in need in our community. 
See, the board's vision for the future was for Genesis Institute basically to get outside the four walls of our building, engage our local community, develop and identify ways to leverage our two core competencies, mental health counseling and discipleship training, so that we could impact more people in our local community. Simply put, our goal, our objective, our big picture vision for the future is to help more people in need in our community. It's about Genesis, our counselors and our course facilitators being present in more relationships with individuals who need assistance, who want assistance. It's walking alongside people on their journey and helping them. It is in essence the foundation of what it means in scripture to bear with one another. Uh, well, as I am sure you would agree with me, there is no shortage of individuals in our society today in need of assistance, either through counseling or discipleship training. In fact, the number of people seeking our services prior to the pandemic was high. The pandemic has just raised the need to almost a crisis level in our society. Take, for example, a couple of social markers that indicate where we're at as a society. Suicide rates are up. Abortion rates are also on the rise. Divorce rates are higher than ever. Domestic violence calls are on the rise. Uh, individuals suffering with addictions, the relapse rate is much higher. In addition to these disturbing social markers, the pandemic has just caused a greater sense of anxiety and, and stress amongst people. Uncertainty, we as human beings are not wired to deal with uncertainty really well. COVID has thrown uncertainty right in our face and forced us to deal with the reality of that. And it has caused past issues that have been dormant for years to come back to the surface, hardships in our relationships, causing fractures in other relationships as well. I share this with to say is that if there was ever a time that Genesis Institute could come alongside and help people in need, now is that time. Now is the time for Genesis to have a type of impact in our local community like never before. In fact, I view it as an opportunity to reach out and engage more people in need, as an opportunity to serve more individuals. You know, at the end of the day, our ultimate objective in everything that we do, either through the counseling arm of our ministry or through the training arm of our ministry, is to help individuals, couples, and family in need, and families in need. Helping individuals experience true healing, forgiveness, and an opportunity to experience the full measure of God's love for them. We help people on that journey. Well, as you're aware, as I mentioned, in February 2020, after taking over, COVID hit and basically disrupted everything in terms of what we were gonna do as an organization. All of our plans and objectives uh, were put on the shelf, and we were forced to just deal with the situation in the moment to find out, figure out how to keep the organization open and running. Well, as you can imagine, the past 20 months or so have been extremely hard on the staff and volunteers of Genesis Institute, as I'm sure it's been for most of you here tonight. Uh, we experienced so much change and uncertainty caused by the pandemic that simply trying to care for people in need became very problematic for us. But as difficult as COVID caused our, our situation at Genesis Institute, the fact of the matter is that because of God's protection and pro provision for Genesis Institute, we were able to serve more people during 2020 than in any other time in our organization's history. So we were able to serve more people during a global pandemic with all the hardships that we had to face as an organization than ever before. Um, in fact, so it's a little bit of numbers here. In 2019, we as an organization completed 4,068 counseling sessions for the year. Uh, in 2020, we completed 5,140 counseling sessions. That's an increase of about 1,000 counseling sessions. So far in 2021, we're at about 3,600 completed counseling sessions, and we're projected to come in about 5,400 completed counseling sessions in 2021, which is again another increase over last year. 
you know, these numbers point to the fact that even with a global pandemic, Genesis is continuing to meet the needs of individuals in our community. Uh, they also indicate that we have been remained flexible to the ever-changing environment caused by COVID and that we've sought to figure out ways to continue to serve people. You know, bottom line from my vantage point as an executive director, that these numbers indicate that we have remained focused on the original intent that Genesis was created to do in 1994, which is to walk alongside individuals and help them through our counseling services and through our training organization. Uh, I am very proud, if I can say that, of the organization's ability to continue to serve in the capacity that we've been able to serve over the last 20 months. And again, it's a testament to the staff and the volunteers that come alongside and do this work on a daily basis. So as we look to the future in terms of our counseling operations, our goal is again to serve and help more people in need in our local community. Now we're looking at multiple ways of leveraging our core competency of mental health counseling. One of the ways that we're doing this is through creation of strategic partnerships with other like-minded nonprofit organizations in our local community. For example, uh, we have a wonderful relationship with Life Services of Spokane. Uh, Glindy, our, the Executive Director of Life Services, has joined us tonight. Um, this relationship with Life Services, and if you're not familiar with Life Services, they are a life-affirming nonprofit organization devoted to walking alongside men and women impacted by sexual health concerns, as well as those impacted by unplanned pregnancies. Life Services has been serving the Spokane community since 1991. So through this collaborative relationship, one of our counselors works out of an office at Life Services, providing mental health care to the clients coming to Life Service for assistance. This type of scenario, I see it as a uh, quadruple win, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Not a three-way win, like Covey would say, it's a quadruple win. The first win is that it gives us the opportunity, Genesis Institute, to accomplish our goal of serving and helping more people in need. That's the first win. The second win is to life services in that they have a licensed, experienced mental health counselor on staff that then they, as a team, can wrap a higher quality of care around the individuals coming to them for assistance. Uh, the third win, the one that I get most excited about when I think about working with other nonprofits is that it gives Glindy and I and the faith-based community an opportunity to show the larger Spokane community nonprofits can work together to leverage their core, core competencies to increase the quality of the care that we offer to people in need in our society. We are not in competition, we're in collaboration. It's about increasing the scope and impact of the care on the individual that comes to our organizations. And we get to do that together. The fourth win, quadruple part of the win, uh, is the most important win in this scenario. And that's the client being served by the counselor at Life Services. These are individuals who are already in a state of crisis coming to Life Services for assistance. Now they have a counselor to walk alongside them to help them process what they're dealing with in a way that helps them make the decisions that they want to make that are going to impact their entire lives. So we are able to provide a higher quality of care to that individual. And a lot of the individuals that come to, for assistance for these nonprofits like Life Services are the most at-risk and vulnerable populations in our community. So we have an opportunity to provide a resource to them that they otherwise might not have access to. And I think that's incredibly important. I lost my spot. Okay, so enough on the counseling arm of the ministry. Genesis Institute has another arm of our ministry, which is called the soul care arm of our ministry. Soul care is an umbrella term that we use that uh, covers our training and mentoring programs. Our training programs provide people with multiple avenues to encourage equip and empower them through biblical insights, proven content, and a dynamic interpersonal learning experience 
the core focus of soul care training programs is to help people on their journey to the life transformational type of relationship with the Lord that we all yearn for and desire. The focus of soul care is not the conveyance of information. It is not simply telling someone to act in a different way. It is helping people go to a deep heart level place where the power of the Holy Spirit starts to work to transform their thinking and their way of life. Our training framework is focused on a spiritual formation process or framework that equips people to dive deep places into their heart. But because of COVID, in 2020 and most of 2021, we were not able to put on our workshops and seminars and other classes. It's only been in the last couple of months that the restrictions on public gathering, the number of people in public gathering has been lifted. So we've started to endeavor to talk with other churches, nonprofit organizations, and other organizations that might be interested in hosting our classes. But even with the downturn in 2020 when it comes to soul care, we haven't just been sitting around waiting. No, we've used this time very wisely. We've used this time to revamp and retool the soul care offerings so that when we are at a place to launch it again now, we will be better equipped to serve and help more people in need in our society. So during this downtime, we engaged two different advisory committees to help us look at soul care, look under the hood, so to speak. The first advisory committee were individuals that have been part of Genesis Institute basically from the beginning. They are intimately involved in Genesis Institute and our processes and the theory of how our classes are structured. We were able to revamp our, our processes and procedures. We highlighted what's incredibly important in our approach to training and discipleship programs. And we were able to formulate a process to maintain that focus on that life transformational experience for folks. The second advisory committee were a group of individuals who have known about Genesis Institute but not, have not been intimately involved in the day-to-day -day operations or through the counseling and training arm. Uh, these are well-respected professionals and godly people in our community who came together and they challenged our paradigms as a leadership. They asked us questions about how we were asking questions about how to improve our processes. What this group did, they provided us something that we were lacking, perspective, another set of eyes on how to leverage our, our core concepts, classes, and other, other classes in the soul care. You know, I've heard the old saying, you can't see the forest because the trees are in the way, or whatever that saying is. This group of individuals not only helped us see the forest, but the forest of opportunities and how we can use other things, other technologies, and other ways of delivering our class content to reach people we hadn't even thought we could reach before. Now, we're excited to roll out those initiatives in, in, the, in, the, in the months to come so that we can serve and help more people in need. Again, I go back to the fact that we have a wonderful opportunity as a ministry to engage this community and help people that are in need. We have a wonderful opportunity. We have the counseling platform and the training platform to be able to help people in need, help families in need. In addition to the work of these two advisory committees, we also started to develop new content to deliver based on what we were seeing and feeling from the local community. Uh, we just launched a pilot group for our newest class last month. Uh, our newest class is a class called Fatherhood Formations. The purpose of Fatherhood Formation is to help men develop a deeper appreciation for their relationship with God the Father. And that deepening of that relationship then informs our ability to develop a relationship with our own children. Right now, as I mentioned, we're going through a pilot group and we're, we have a seasoned group of individuals that have been down the road of fatherhood and with Genesis fine-tuning this class. So we'll be ready to launch that. We have another group who's been evaluating what I would call one of the benchmark classes of Genesis Institute, which is the core concepts of biblical mentoring. Dave created this course and originally taught it at over two semesters at Moody Bible Institute. Well, we have a group of individuals that have walked through this class and have been a part of Genesis for a long time, looking at that class and saying, okay, the two semester classes, 
how do we condense this down into a small group formatted experience? so then we can deliver it to the local churches to help them prepare their body to, to help the individuals that are coming to, to them for assistance. We see this as a critical step in our ability to engage the local community, to partner with other churches, nonprofits, and other organizations to serve folks. You know, as it states in Ephesians 4, verse 12, our goal with this objective with core concepts is to equip people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. We have the expertise and the history of knowledge and programs available to help other organizations better care for those that come to them for assistance. And that is the spirit of what we want to do more of in the future, that partnership. Well, as I reflect again over the last two years, basically, about what Genesis has been able to accomplish, what we've endured and, and walked through as an organization, uh, I've come to a pretty strong conclusion in my life. That is, this is God's ministry. It's not Will's ministry. God is the owner of Genesis Institute. He's just called us to be stewards of his organization. We are called to be stewards of Genesis Institute. It's God's ministry. It's his ministry that he uses to focus on helping people in need in our community. He's asking us to manage and care for his organization. You know, that's the role of a steward. And I'm not talking about tithing on Sunday. I'm talking about the role, your identity as a steward. The role or an identity of a steward is to care for that which has been entrusted to you by the rightful owner. Genesis Institute is God's ministry. He's entrusted me, the board of directors, the other staff, our volunteers, with the proper care and management of caring for human souls. We are stewards of his organization. Embracing this stewardship identity at Genesis has helped us create a stewardship theology and a framework of doing ministry. And let me explain a little bit about that. This framework helps us recognize and operate in a fashion that keeps God as the owner of Genesis Institute in focus and we as, as stewards secondary. This stewardship framework motivated us to seek accreditation through the ECFA, that's the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. Accreditation through the ECFA represents our commitment to properly stewarding, caring for, and managing all of the aspects of Genesis Institute, which again is owned by the Lord. ECFA accreditation process includes a formal audit and review of our policies and procedures related to multiple areas of our ministry, governance, financial management, legal compliance, gift administration, and leadership structures. This stewardship framework also extends to our approach to engaging the community in raising the kingdom resources that we need to move this organization into the future. Our objective is to help other individuals recognize their roles as steward, stewards of whatever God has blessed them with, entrusted to them, that's your time, that's your talents, and your treasure. Helping individuals see that God is the rightful owner of everything in our lives. And how we use those gifts, the talents, time, and treasure is a testament of our relationship back to the Lord. So we focus on helping individuals see that relationship, their, their identity as a steward. Therefore, our approach to fundraising is fairly simple and straightforward. We inform people as to what we do and how we help individuals in need in our community. We intend to inspire people by sharing with them stories of what God has done in and through the staff and volunteers at Genesis Institute to impact people's lives. Again, that's, that's what God does. We don't do that. God does that transformation. And the last part is we just simply invite people to prayerfully consider 
what the Lord would have them do with what he's entrusted to them for this season. You know, one of the aspects about being a steward and embracing your identity as a steward is that it requires us to stay in contact with the owner to better understand his will and his plans for the organization. And again, in this scenario, I'm referring to the Lord. If we stay connected to the Lord and understand his plans and will for us, and what, to, how to use the assets that he's, he's given to us, then we'll know. So when we ask people to prayerfully consider partnering with us, we're asking people to have a conversation with the Lord about how he would have you use the assets that he's entrusted to you for this time. So at the end of the day, if individuals hear from the Lord that participating with Genesis Institute is not what they want, we still have succeeded because we have created a relationship, a conversation between individuals and the Lord. Our hope is that you get encouraged to, to support the ministry. But again, that's God's domain. That's not our domain. Our domain is simply to invite you to prayerfully consider partnering with us. Well, as I've mentioned a few times tonight, our objective in the future is to serve and help more people in need. I referenced uh, our programs, our services. I provided you some numbers regarding our efforts and our activities. Now I want to try to help you see what the outcome of caring for human souls actually looks like. What would it look like if we are able to serve and help more people in need in, in our community? What would that mean to us as a city? What would it mean to our churches and our families and our, our community if we are able to help? Well, I want to try to help you see that future by sharing with you two testimonies of individuals that have been impacted by Genesis Institute. Uh, the first is through a, a video. As you watch this short video, please keep in mind that what we are seeing in this story is what God did how God helped this individual, and how they helped this individual walk through this season. You know, this story is not about statistics. It's not about rates of improvement, efficiency models, or any kind of business language or anything like that. No, this is about a human being. This is an opportunity that we have to try to connect to another human being that has gone through a very hard stretch, who is in a very much, much different place today than they were when they started the journey. So I would encourage you, as you watch this, pick up on the body language. Listen to the words that are used to express their story. Connect to this individual story. Connect to the person. And when the video's over, I'll come back up and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. My name's Tracy Holman, and I've got two kids, Cooper and Brooklyn. They're 10 and 12. Well, I homeschool my kids. And so we're going to be starting homeschooling here. It's a lot of work. I have, I have a lot of acreage that I have to take care of, and I've got a big garden, and I've got my kids, and, and I volunteer. And so it kind of, on my side, I'm sort of going all the time. My husband was having some issues that he just went into the regular doctor for, never sick a day in his life, really. And so we went in, and um, he went in and had some tests done, and then like it, seven, eight o'clock at night, the doctor called us and said, you need to go to the emergency room now. And so we had to find somebody to watch the kids and we rushed down there. And that was the night they told us that he had stage four colon cancer and that it was terminal and there was no cure for it. And that we had a year and a half to live. It was a long journey of fighting, <laughs> trying to battle and keep your hopes up and yet knowing um, that the outcome wasn't gonna be good. We just decided that we were gonna take things one step at a time and one surgery at a time and one, and, and it was, it's funny because we had this little joke where, because I told them, I said, all right, this is one surgery, we're done, check, right? And, and so it was, it was funny, he was in the hospital and just had woken up and he's like, Check, <laughs> and it was so funny because he was coming out of it, and he—it was just our little joke, like check, this one's done. Okay, we made it through this one, and so there was lots of surgeries, lots of chemo, 
um, lots of doctor's office visits and everything. And that's part of why I ended up going to the Genesis because I knew that I was gonna be a single mom. I'm gonna need all the help I can because I need to do this on my own, so. And it's a, for me, it was big because I was raised by a single mom and I remember how hard my mom worked and how rough it was. And so it was, it was a long, it was a long struggle. And I think that in the class, you know, looking at when we went through the iceberg and thinking about um, under the surface and thinking of other people. And then I started looking at what was under my surface. My father had left me when I was younger and I just had a, um, my brother was a drug addict. And so we just, um, I just, I didn't, never had a male role model in my life that was positive. Things were coming out and I didn't really know how to deal with them. I didn't know where they went because I was like 40 years I've been repressing all this stuff, you know, and it's like coming out and I'm like, where did that come from? And so it was sort of the iceberg of, of thinking because I, oh, I have to think of my kids as icebergs and know what's going on. And, and I could do that, but it, when I had to do it to myself, um, and I thought, oh yeah, I've got this, but nobody knows all this stuff that's going on underneath the surface. And I've just been carrying that for a long time. And so it was very, very lonely. I didn't have a whole lot of friends. I was just very, like I had surface friends and no intimate connections. And um, I kind of lived in a world and I fit in where I was supposed to, like, oh, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do this and yet I never felt like I belonged anywhere um, before. And so, and, and, and that includes the first part of, you know, my marriage. Our life group had walked through the whole thing together, his illness and his death and everything, and, and it's made us so much closer and he has just worked everything out. Um, and not just in my life, but the people that knew my husband and the people that are walking along it with me, they get to go along for the ride. <laughs> and it, it's really amazing. Without the Genesis Institute and the parenting class, I don't think, I don't know how much, if I would have even gone the places I've gone and to dig deep and really bring these things up. And, and that would include me allowing people to love me and allowing people to care about me and, and accepting that for myself, because I don't think I ever would have really gone there there was this tragedy and my husband was sick and my husband was going to die and what am I gonna do? I don't know how to raise kids on my own and yet he has just, he has made it something beautiful. He has turned it, in the parenting class I had this little note in my, I was looking through my notes and it said, you make broken things beautiful. And that was my little bookmarker thing as I was going through it and so I found it again and I thought that's exactly what it was. It was such a broken, I was broken, the limb and the situation was just broken. It's not supposed to be this way. And yet he just takes it, he took it and he's made it beautiful. So now just thinking about, like I can do so many more things now because I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to go to church. I'm not afraid to do the things that I used to do. I'm not afraid to do this video. <laughs> um, and, and so it's just that process of being completely alone and now people have come and it's like, oh, this is what, this is what this feels like. It feels really good. And like, I feel like I can do anything um, with God behind me. And so it's just this, that relationship because I was forced to deal with that relationship that I had with God. And so now it's like, okay, I trust you. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go and, and trust that you're gonna lead me there. Well, I have had the opportunity to listen and watch that video probably 10 times in preparation. So I've had a little bit more time to think about it than you guys have. Uh, but one of the aspects that is just really stands out to me in her story, in Tracy's story, you know, if you look at her story from what she was experiencing uh, when she first came to Genesis Institute and where she's at now, the language that she described, it's the sense of community. <clears throat> it's the people that wrapped around her during that time and walked with her that supported her. You know, when you look again to scripture and it says to bear with one another, I think that is a great example of what 
scripture means to bear with someone. You know, Genesis Institute is about that wrapping around individuals. We know this. God helps his people through other people often. And that's what Genesis is. Our classes and our framework is about the relationships, providing people a safe place in order to walk that journey of healing, forgiveness, or whatever it is that they're walking through. Uh, Tracy's joined us tonight, and I would like to publicly acknowledge her courage to share her testimony first and foremost, but just her small group. She mentioned it in the video that her small group journeyed with her during this process. Her extended small group family is here as well. So Tracy, thank you. And everyone that's here supporting Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not lose sight of the courage that Tracy demonstrated in walking that path to healing.